morning. This whole pandemic situation, like, really sucks. It's, like, really negatively affected a lot of people, a lot of small businesses. And, I mean, I've been more fortunate than others so far. But it kind of hit me in a way I wasn't really expecting. I've been in a creative slump this past week. Today, I'm gonna try to be as creative as I can be. I'm gonna try to vlog the entire day and make something out of what is currently a mundane time in terms of daily activities. We gotta go run and get some groceries. I have to go swing by my mom's restaurant. And also, uh, I think we're gonna try to get some exercise in later in the day. Since the gyms are closed, we might go for a walk on the river walk or something like that. All the while, I wanna talk about the Sony a6600, which is the camera that's filming me right now. I picked this one up at the same time I picked up the a6100, and this one was meant to be my replacement for the 6500. What ended up happening was, this thing is so good at video that it's kind of replacing my a7 III when it comes to video work. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about this camera were my first impressions of it and how it functions as a video dedicated camera. See, it's got everything the a7 III has when it comes to video capabilities. We're talking uh, 4K 30 FPS, we're talking you know 1080p 120 frames per second. We're also talking about the fact that unlike the a6500, the back rear screen does not dim when you're shooting at either of those two options, which is great because Nobody likes a dim screen when you're out in the bright sunlight. On top of that, the A6600 has an updated autofocus system, which is absolutely incredible. And honestly, Andrew and I were talking about it, and I think we think it's better than the A7III's autofocus system, which is already really good. One of my favorite parts is that I autofocus works 100% of the time when filming on the A6600, whether that's 4K, uh, 30 frames per second, 1080p, uh, 120 frames per second, uh, it's just always work, so the focus is always tack on. One of the great things about the a6600 is now it uses the new Sony Z batteries, which are the larger capacity batteries, which means I can record for most of the day on one, maybe two batteries. That's in stark contrast to the a6500, where I had to carry around anywhere between five or six batteries if I'm doing a full day shoot, because those batteries just went by really quickly. And the icing on the cake is that not only does it have all of these same features, if not better features, than the a7 III, it also has a flip-up screen, which a lot of people might be like, oh, but like you don't need a flip-up screen, not everyone's a vlogger, you know, what's the point of a flip-up screen? Well, the thing is, the flip-up screen doesn't really hurt, and making videos like this, I can just look up and I see myself on the back screen. I don't need to have an external monitor, which means my entire setup is my camera, lens, microphone, that's it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love gear, but I also love not having to lug around a thousand things when I just want to quickly create content. Especially right now because of this whole creative block thing that I've been having this past week because, you know, I've been shut in the house for, uh, for the past week. Being able to just put it on a tripod and hit record and go is so much better because right now it's like I don't even want to do anything, let alone set up the monitor, set up a boom arm for the microphone. No, I just kind of want to just grab and go. Speaking of going, uh, this this is taking a hot second, so let's just use some of that video magic and, uh... Nice! So it's honestly kind of eerie how, like, out of stock some things are in Publix. Actually, um, one of my friends uh, works at Publix and was like, a customer came in and bought like $1,100 worth of groceries. And she was like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay in my house for the next month, which is kind of intense, but at the same time, this might be a, a long ordeal that we all have to go through. And if you haven't heard of the, this concept yet, everyone's been posting about it, but you know, flatten the curve. To, the concept is to not overload the healthcare system so that way we can make it through this and it doesn't get to like that point where health professionals are making, you know, life or death decisions on who gets uh, life-saving treatment. 
Since we don't have a vaccine yet, uh, what we can do is basically a social vaccine. If we all isolate ourselves from each other, it's basically the equivalence of a vaccine. Uh, more educated people, uh, you know, more qualified people have talked about this, everything from educational channels like Kurtz Gazak to news channels like Philip DeFranco to even uh, physicians like Chris from Becky and Chris. Uh, I mean, check out their videos for a better explanation of this. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting and trying time. So we're headed to my mom's restaurant and uh, I gotta go check on a few things. But back to the topic at hand, the Sony a6600. So why do I like this camera so much right now? Well, first of all, it just works, which is great. It never has any autofocus issues. Granted, I'm shooting manual focus right now, so that doesn't really matter right now, but I never have any autofocus issues. The image quality is spectacular. The form factor is tiny. And here's a big part. If I could go back in time like four years and an option like this existed, would I pick this or an a7 III? Well, if I was gonna work on just video content, I would be really inclined to pick up the a6600. Oh, bumpy. This a6600 and some APS-C lenses. And here's why. The a7 III is like two grand. The lenses I have for are another several five to seven grand just to have a complete package. Meanwhile, if I only worked on the a6600, I could just have the Sigma 16, 30, and 56 trio along with this Lawa nine millimeter and a gimbal and I'd have everything under what like four grand ish ballpark maybe even less than that probably like under three grand um, and I would have a full package I wouldn't need anything more than that if it when it came to cameras and lenses so that's the part where I'm really impressed with this it delivers incredible quality without sacrificing much at all if anything I don't know if people are right when they say like APS-C is dying because I see something like this has significant value to offer all right, so I just gotta swing inside real quick. Uh, gotta go check on a few things with like our POS system and all that. Yes, the name of the restaurant is China One. I know, it is the most generic name in the world. Uh, it's the name that the restaurant had when we bought it, uh, but we were thinking about changing the name down the line. What do you guys think would be a good name for a Chinese restaurant? Let me know in the comment section down below. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, Annette. Hi. You just covered my face. Oh, my bad. Like... We'll do that again. Hi, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the big reasons why I bought the A6600 was because this is the first Sony uh, non-video cinema camera that has no record limit. Well, not true. Technically, we found out uh, from Potato Jet's video where he tried to vlog for 24 hours straight uh, that there's actually a record limit of 13 hours. But I'm gonna assume nobody's gonna be using this camera recording 13 hours straight. But yeah, that's extremely useful for when you're doing event videography. Uh, think about wedding ceremonies, recording nonstop. Think about conferences if you wanna record a speaker and their presentation's longer than half an hour. Uh, this is really common if you're doing these event coverage kind of videography. So this is one of the only options for from Sony that you could get without buying like an FS5 or an FS7 that lets you record for longer than the video record limit. I understand that you could also get an external recorder like you know one of like the Atomos's like Ninja Flame or any of those recorders and record externally but then you have more that you have to worry about so give or take this is a really small package that delivers a lot of value but I don't want to just sit here and tell you oh my god I love this camera it's the best thing in the world you should go out and buy it uh, although I do really do love this camera there are still flaws the Sony systems still have some issues and the most notable ones are gonna be rolling shutter is still so garbage when you're shooting 4k on these APS-C bot just look at the oh my god what's happening to those buildings back there it's just going into the it's just not good. Um, Built-in uh, image stabilization, in-body image stabilization is just not that great. If you've been watching this video, you can tell, like it's not terrible, it's not like shaking and you know, 
vomit inducing, but it's still not great. You compare it to something like the GH5, you compare it to other cameras in the market at the same price point, and they've got superior in-body stabilization. So you really do want to end up getting yourself something like an optically uh, uh, stabilized lens. And the last thing that I would say that I dislike about the A6600 is the 120 frames per second is still beautiful. I do love using slow motion on these uh, camera bodies, but the one thing is they're still at such a low uh, bit rate that when you do shoot in 120p and you stretch all that out, there's not enough data uh, for each of the frames. So that means you're gonna get softer, you're gonna get uh, grainier, and you're gonna get less accurate colors when you're shooting at 120p. But that's, from my perspective, that's somebody who uses cameras very often. But to get a better perspective of someone who might not use cameras as often as I do, I want to get Annette's opinion. What do you think about the form factor of this camera? How do you like it in terms of size, weight, features? Do you like the flip-up screen? Talk to me about that. Yeah, so the flip-up screen looks really convenient if you were very serious about vlogging. It sounded like I said vlogging. I said vlogging. Um, this isn't pretty... This isn't bad, especially for someone that doesn't have very strong shoulders or arms. <laughs> it's pretty good compared to some of the other things that he's handed me to vlog on. <laughs> right. All right. Back to you. Back to me. Okay. Well, we're going to just finish our walk. We've just walked like a mile this way, so we're probably going to turn around and walk back the other way. So I'll see you guys back at the office. All right. We're back at the office. This is really dark, actually. This is really moody. Alexa, turn on the lights. Okay, that's a little bit better. That was a little dark. Oh yeah, outfit change because we, we uh, actually went for a workout when we got back. Uh, we just did a home workout uh, and we got a little creative too. But all that aside, yeah, today's video was just something I just kind of wanted to do because I just wanted to get out of my like creator's block funk that I was in for like a week. Like seriously, for a whole week, I just had no motivation to edit photos, edit videos. I didn't want to write any videos, but uh, I think this was really good because it was just kind of like very impromptu. I just said, I want to talk about the A6600. I want to kind of bring light to, you know, this whole pandemic situation, which has been crappy for so many people. And I wanted to make a creative video while I was at it and challenge myself a little bit. Cause yeah, it was kind of a mundane day. I mean, it was grocery, seeing my parents and then going for a walk and then an indoor home workout so it wasn't like the craziest day right but I wanted to make something out of it and I don't know I thought it was fun I enjoyed making this I hope you guys enjoyed watching this if you want to hear more about the a6600 um, I'll probably come up with a video a full review of the camera in the coming month or two I really just want to get more time with the camera before I make one of those reviews but if you've been wanting to check it out because you've been liking the footage that you've been seeing on screen links as usual are always in the description down below and of course, I've already reviewed the lens that I shot this entire video with, the Laowa 9mm f2.8. There's the link right there for you. But let me know in the comment section down below, how are you guys dealing with this whole situation right now? Like, is it seriously affecting your day-to-day? -day? Are you working from home right now? I mean, are you working? Like, that's the crappy part for a lot of people, you know? So, uh, yeah, how are you guys holding up right now? And as usual, guys, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see more content, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Yeah, that was kind of an impromptu video. Okay, well, uh, as always, see you guys in the next video. Peace.